Okay, guys. So, um, yeah, hi everyone. In case you don't know, I'm uh, one of the teaching assistants or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be teaching you guys hopefully for these integrals and uh, some differential equations. Uh, if you guys want to know, you know, before we start into the plan in my lecture, I want to give like five minute rule of how I do limits because I've seen there's already been a session on limits and I think I've seen a lot of good students just get crushed by it. So I would just give this like it's literally five lines of how I evaluate integrals. Um, uh, not integral, sorry, limits. And hopefully this is going to help you. So how do I do limits, especially on the L'Hopital, because now some people have learned it and think is like, okay, I'm just going to use this and everything's going to be so nice. That is not always true. So give, let me tell you exactly what I mean. By it. So uh, computing, let's put it like this. Okay, so computing limits. Um, the first step is evaluate your limit. I can't stress how important this is, okay? Do not just, as soon as you see something, dive in, okay, I'm gonna apply L'Hopital, everything is gonna be fine. No, evaluate your limit. This is a fan, evaluate your limit, fancy term, plug in, you know, the limits. So if you have, you know, if you have limit when X goes to A, plug in A, okay? And see what you get. Okay, now, after you have evaluated, hopefully successful, there are two cases. First case, just put, just put like this, small i. You have gotten the value. Okay, you're done at this point. You have computed the limit, you're done, congrats. Now, you got, the second case is, you got stuck, okay? At this point, you check. This is the most important thing I've seen across the years. A lot of students just fail this simple, simple part. And it's so important, so simple, but people forget. Check if you are in the case of infinity over infinity, plus minus, plus minus, or zero over zero. These, you know, two, four, five, however you want to put the signs here. These cases are called indeterminate cases. Why? Because you can't know where the limit goes, okay? Only in this case, only in this case, again, really important, you can proceed to step two, step two which is apply L'Hopital. If on the exam you do not check that you're in the right case. Even if you apply L'Hopital correctly, you'll lose points. If you are in the wrong case, which is not one of these, and you apply L'Hopital, you're basically gonna lose everything, no discussion given. Okay, because you showed you showed that you do not know the theorem and you and you just blindly evaluate and remember something from class. So really, really important. This step writing stuff like limit. X goes to, let's take infinity for simplicity case. F of X, GX, writing the small, small thing, infinity over infinity, okay? It shows me the fact that you know the theorem, that you evaluated it, and there's no other way to solve it. In this class, you don't know any other way to solve it. And now you write limit X goes to infinity is equal to the well-known thing from L'Hopital, okay? Only if you're in one of these cases. If you're not in one of these cases and you apply L'Hopital, you messed up. You're gonna get a wrong answer uh, and you're gonna lose literally all the points. Okay? After you apply L'Hopital, in point three, oops, sorry about that, you go back to point one.
which is evaluate your function, evaluate your limit again, see where you're at. If you've gotten a value, you're done. If you got stuck, check for the infinity over infinity cases, apply L'Hopital again, and keep on going until you get an answer, okay? It's really repetitive, but um, yeah. I think what's what people are a little bit struggling right now is with, with evaluating the limit um, because of the concepts of zero and infinity and minus infinity. Uh, all I can say is that it's just gonna start making sense at some point, okay? But really, really important, I wanted to tell this because I've seen there's definitely not been enough attention on this. If you apply L'Hopital in an exam on a case that's wrong, you basically lost all the problem at that point because there's no partial credit which can be given for anything, basically. Okay? And I'm not trying to be mean with you guys. I'm just trying to help you. Okay. Now, uh, let's... Any questions on this? Otherwise, we're just going to move. Um, some, some really important organizing things. I have finished. I've have finished grading your first assignment like ages ago. The reason it hasn't been posted is because somehow people still still getting still, uh, still keep getting extensions. I think this is the third one by now. Uh, the last one has been submitted today. I hope uh, I'm gonna grade it and hopefully we're gonna get a results uh, today. Again, um, I don't know exactly what happened. You can talk to the professor. But basically, we've just been waiting on extensions. Okay. Again, if you are concerned that you have failed, you should talk to me. Uh, if you have failed the mandatory assignment, you should talk to me. I said it before. I think I passed almost everyone who basically showed that they give a whatever. Okay. Any questions on this? Fine. Now, I'll give you the structure of why, what I'm going to do in the integrals class. How it's mostly going to be spread. If you wanna, if something is too slow or you've already been doing that, uh, just uh, no one to skip basically. So on the first lecture today, I'm going to do integrals, basically just uh, a definition, a definite, indefinite, and uh, Basically, that's it. Maybe some exercises. And I'm going to show you the by parts, whatever, by parts method. OK. Now, so this is just going to do big generalities and uh, the by parts method, then the second lecture, I'm just gonna do exercises here and emphasize this by parts thing. Um, then on the third one, I'm going to do the substitution method. Again, exercises. Uh, then on four, I'm going to teach you the, oh, I'm still lacking the word. Uh, I'm liking the theorem right now, uh, lacking the name. I'm really bad with names. Uh, some, you know, I'll remember the name theorem. Le Leibniz? Yes. Leibniz something theorem. Okay. And then in five, we're going to do differential equations. Uh, and we're going to split them into, I think we're going to do separable here and li ordinary linear here, I think. I have to check exactly, but this is kind of how the structure is going to look like. So if, for example, you think you got all the by parts methods from today, you don't need to show tomorrow. I don't, for me, it doesn't matter really. Okay. Cool. So let's uh, let's just start with what integrals are. Let me see. So one thing that I want to comment on integrals is the theory behind integrals is I think the easiest in this class. There's nothing. It's exactly like integrals. All that integral, all that, oh, exactly like derivatives. Sorry about that. 
All that integrals require is practice, is exercise. The hardest part is not going to be knowing the bipart theorem. It's going to be knowing when to apply it. So that's why I would recommend actually exercising it. Like when you come to workshops in integrals, obviously, if you ask me and Adam, we're going to help you and you're going to solve the problem. Do not worry about that. The thing you have to worry about that is that we told you you have to use the biparts. In an exam, nobody's going to tell you to use the biparts. You should, you're going to, you, you should sense that you have to use the biparts or substitution, if that makes sense. So you got to get that feeling of how, what I need to do to solve this. And that is only going to come through practice. Okay. That is one comment I have to make. Just remember like integrals before, uh, just derivatives. Sorry. When you did derivatives, you did a lot of practice with them. You did a lot of simple derivatives. And now when, if I give you something, you can actually solve it. The same idea applies to integrals. Why? Because integrals are just the inverse operation to derivatives. What do I mean by this? Let's start, let's say we start at x squared. Okay. If I take the derivative of this, I get 2x. Okay. If I integrate this 2x, I'm going to get x squared. Okay. And this is literally all the theory you have on integrals. It's just understanding that it's the inverse operations of, operation of derivative. Now, um, obviously I'm not gonna leave you like this. Um, I'm gonna give you some, uh, maybe some uh, properties and et cetera. Okay. So I guess the formal definition would be, um, definition for indefinite for indefinite integral the definition for indefinite integral is integral of f of x dx is equal to big f of x plus a constant where derivative of f prime of x is equal to small f of x. This is the definition for a definite integral. So it's basically as simple as I described it. Now, there's some diff notations and things that pop up here which might not make sense. So let's address them. This f of x, this big f of x that has this property is called multiple names. The primitive or the antiderivative of small f, of small f. Okay. I think antiderivative makes more sense because you've got this for from integration, which is the opposite thing of derivation okay now this dx over here is basically showing you what function you're integrating over remember when we had derivative of big f of x over dx basically showing you what you're taking a derivative of this is the same exact thing it's showing you what you're taking an integral of okay it's the same thing I don't, I, I don't know i can give you like i can write exactly what i said which is showing what to integrate over okay now um Okay, I'm more or less done. This is this is kind of it. This is all that you're gonna ever use in this class for indefinite integrals.
Now, sounds simple, yes. Let's take an example, see if it, see if it actually sticks. What is the integral of x squared d of x? If anyone knows, you can just tell me. Yeah. One third times x to the power of three. Exactly. One over three, x to the third, plus a constant. In indefinite integrals, do not forget this constant. Uh, it's just a matter of competition. One second, it's a little bit foggy. I don't know why. Okay. It just matters to put the constant there. It's be, uh, because it's going to be helpful in differential equations. Um, now, why is this the answer? Well, we take it by the definition. If this is the answer, it means that if I were to take a derivative of this thing, one over three x squared plus a constant derivative of x, I would need to get x squared. This is just the definition, okay? So let's test it out. The whole idea of putting this constant is when you take a derivative of this constant respect to x, it just becomes zero. So I get zero, and here I have one third times, what is the derivative of x squared with respect to x? It's just three times x, Two plus ha has to be equal to x squared. This goes away, this goes away. It's correct. Okay? It is basically just as simple as that. Now, um, I don't know, let's, let's uh, I think in your book you have a different amount of, uh, I guess, definitions and uh, theorems and whatnot. Some people, you know, some, People work differently in the sense that some people can memorize, for example, integral of x to the power of a dx. Uh, let's put a greater than uh, zero, or at least not minus one, whatever, is equal to one a plus one times x a plus one plus a constant. Okay. Some people can memorize this. Obviously, if you take a derivative of the right side of the right side, I'm gonna get the left side. Okay. So some people can memorize this, some people can't memorize this. So what I do is they just compute, compute the anti, you know, compute the antiderivative or get this by just you know knowing the derivative formula, which is x to the power of a derivative with respect to x is just equal to a times x a minus one. Okay, some people use this to determine the formula. It doesn't matter how, and I don't personally care how. It just matters how it work, how it's better for you, if it makes sense. Okay, if you want to memorize this formula, go for it. If you're just confident that you know, knowing this simple derivation rule, you can compute the the the, the integral. Again, go for it. Whatever works. Okay. Other other examples. Um, Let's, let's give some other tricks. What if you have integral of f of x plus g of x dx? Just like in the derivation rule, you can just write it differently. You can just write as the derivative of each of them separately. Here I can just write as the integral of each of them separately. So I just get integral of f of x dx plus integral g of x dx. Okay? Now, um, what are tricks? I, I, I don't know. If you have something like integral of a f of x dx, Again, just like in just like in the derivative is equal to a times integral of f of x dx. The constant just jumps in front. And these this this what I'm writing here holds for any function f uh, f of x and any constant a you can think of. Um, cool. I guess uh, this is 
literally all I, I have for uh, indefinite integrals. All the other formulas are in the book. We're not gonna, if you wanna memorize them, go for it. If you wanna compute stuff, again, doesn't matter. I'll just pop up an example and see how we do on it. Um, well, yeah, if you have any questions on this, this is literally indefinite integrals. Let's see. I think I prepared one. Well, okay, let's take this one. Integral x squared plus 3x plus 2 dx. Okay. So here's how, we, oh, here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to solve this one, and then I'm going to give you an exactly similar one, and I'll give you five minutes to solve it. Okay? So since we're on our first lecture, let's, let's do it in the simplest way. We're going to use this formula over here, which means I'm just going to separate this integral. Separate is a, just a complex term for me doing this. I'm just going to write integral of x squared dx plus integral of 3x dx plus integral of 2 dx. All right, I just split it. Now, let's see what we have. Um, what is this? What is this integral? Again, you can use the formula. You can use whatever works for you, the way I memorize it or the way I deal with this. Again, it's not the best way, but whatever. Is that whenever, uh, whenever I have a power function, I know that the integral has to be one power bigger, okay? I don't know what coefficient is, so I just know it's gonna be one bigger. So I just do like sketch it on like my, on my scratch paper or whatever, I have this and I know, okay, I have to have an x third. And I know that if I take derivative of this x third, I'm gonna get three x squared, but I only need x squared. So I'm just gonna divide by this by three, okay? This is how I work. Now, if you wanna memorize the formula, this one, go for it. But the way I work, I just think of it, I just think about it rational. If I need to find something that I, if I take a derivative, I get x squared. It obviously needs to be an x to the third. And now, I just, if I just divide it by three, then I'm gonna get uh, exactly x squared, which is what I'm looking to get. So this is just, again, one third of x to the three plus, and here I'll just write constant one, doesn't matter. Now, for the next integral, I can just write it out really nice, which is three integral of x dx. And I, you know, I apologize for those of you that maybe I'm going too slow, but this is the first one. So I really am showcasing, I guess, different, um, uh, different, um, I don't know, uh, properties and things that I'm doing. For example, you know, I'm splitting it then I'm moving the constant in front, as you can see here. You know, stuff like this that might seem really simple, uh, simple and maybe uh, not necessary in this case. But when we when you get to more complex uh, integrals, these small and obvious things that I'm doing might play a huge role. Okay, so that's why I'm doing it so slow in the start. But I don't know; it just makes sense for me. Dx. So again. I just move the constant in front. It's, and it's really good to do it this way because you just get like a clear mind of what's going on. You see clearly everything that's happening. So I get one third X to the third plus C1 plus three. And again, either you apply the formula or you think, think of it how I do, which is, you know, this is an X for me to get X after a derivative. I need to take a derivative of X squared, that's clear but I get two X. So what I do is I just put this two on the other side. So I get three times a half X squared plus our constant two, whatever, plus 
two times. And here, what do I get? What do I get one? What do I need to take a derivative of? Just x. If I take a derivative of x with respect to x, I'm just gonna get one. x plus constant three. And this is my answer. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it look a little bit nicer. I have one third x to the third plus three over two x squared plus two x plus a lot of constants here. And the idea is with these constants is that they can be any number you, and you don't need to write it like this. You can just put plus a constant. Okay, whatever, plus some number there. So that everyone kind of follow what I did here. I just applied the simple, simple procedure. Maybe again, on something not necessary. Maybe some of you already saw the answer from the start. I'm just saying that these small procedures help a lot when dealing with more complex things. So now let's just cook up a new example. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm old, so um, I'll do the simple one and you guys are gonna do the harder one because that's standard. So just compute integral of x to the fourth plus uh, one over x plus four dx. Okay, I'll give it, yeah, let's, let's give it five minutes. Maybe too much. Okay, let's give it two more minutes and uh, then I'll solve it. And then we're going to move to uh, the next type of integrals and the last one. Okay, so how do, you, how, how do you guys do it? Well, I don't know, but this is how I would do it. So I'm going to split it. X to the fourth dx plus integral of one x dx plus integral of four dx. And this x to the fourth, again, I'm thinking, what do I need to take a derivative of? 
it has to be x to the power of fifth and multiplied by something. And uh, by now, even I memorized this and I don't memorize stuff, plus a constant one. So whenever you have a sum of integrals like this, you can drop the constant, just drop carrying it over all the time and just plug it at the end, plus a constant, okay? Because if you look at what we did previously, well, we had this thing here, and I just said, it doesn't matter. I just put a constant for whatever, okay? So don't need to carry it everywhere. It just makes things cleaner. Now, I gave, I threw a curveball here. What is one over X? This is not gonna, you, it's not gonna work with the formula. So you gotta think a bit. Uh, it's not gonna work with this formula. What is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not gonna work with that, <laughs> this one. It's not gonna work with this one because you would get a minus one, so you get one over zero, which in real numbers does not exist. I know in limits it, it exists, but in real numbers it doesn't. So you either memorize it again, or you think about it. What do I need to take a derivative of to get one over X? And the answer is just, you scroll through your head and you just get log of X, okay? Or ln of X. ln of X plus, Again, I'm just moving this four in front. So I have four, one, I just, and this is just four X. And I said, just slap a constant at the end. And this is my answer. Okay, pretty, pretty clean. Everyone kind of got the idea of how we're solving the indefinite separable simplest version. Cool. <laughs> now let's move to the next part, which is definite integrals. Uh, don't worry, they're basically the exact same. They just have a fancy name. Okay. Definite integrals. Um, the only difference is that I'm going to have something like this. Integral. This was the indefinite. Okay. This was the indefinite integral, which we just finished studying. Now in the definite, you just have a, b, which just writes that what is the integral of f of x from a to b? That is what it's, what it reads as. Now this one actually has a graphical interpretation. What it actually is, if this is your graph, let's say this is a, this is B, you know, this is the F. Then this function over here is just the area under the graph from A to B. Okay, are you ever gonna use this? Don't think so, but it, it helps. It helps some people. So you can think of this as area under the graph from A to B. Now, I can either give you the, ex the formula of this, or I can show you some proof which you're probably never gonna use. For those of you that are interested in the proof, um, I can use this page actually. For those of you that are interested in the proof, it's, um, it uses a combination of two theorems. I'm gonna write them really, really loosely. For those of you that are not interested in this and are probably not aiming to pursue math and just want to know how to compute integrals, you can phase out for like two minutes. So the idea is that you can, you have this f of x as being equal to some f of a minus f of b over some a minus b kind of thing, okay? This is this is from the, the theorem, which the slope theorem, which you learned, okay? Now, you got to remember that this f of x is just big prime of, uh, big uh, f prime of x. And then if you write this limit, f of a uh, at x would be f of x plus f of x plus epsilon over epsilon, epsilon goes to zero. Anyway, 
this is kind of the whole idea from here. You would get the formula, which now people that phase out should come back. Everyone is going to use is this integral. If you guys are interested in this proof more or, or whatever, we can, we can talk afterwards. But this is just equal to big F of B minus big F of A. Okay, where again, this F is the primitive of primitive of uh, small F. Okay, this, everything that I wrote up up top doesn't matter. This, very important. Um, Okay, let's see. Now, um, I'll give you some properties and then we'll see how it works, okay? Some properties of this are, so first of all, all the properties that we did from the indefinite integrals apply to this as well. So for example, integral from A to B of F of X plus G of X, the X, is also equal to integral from A to B of F of X dx plus integral A to B of G of X dx. Okay? So everything that applied for indefinite applies for the definite as well. Now, the only things that are things that are new are, are the things related to the these A and Bs. What do I mean by this? If I have integral of a no, let's say minus a and a of f of x the x what is this equal to the idea is that you can split the integrals along this minus a a so i can just write this as integral from minus a to zero f of x dx plus what's left integral from zero to a of f of x dx. So I mean, I'm just, I'm just splitting across this from A to B kind of thing. I can split it however I want it to. The general form would be that if I have integral from A to B, f of x dx, I can just, and you know, C is somewhere inside, then I can just write it as integral A to C, f of x dx, plus integral of C to B, f of x dx. Okay? Now, um, what are the properties? Usually you're gonna find, okay, yeah, yeah. Integral from A to B, of f of x dx is also equal to minus integral from b to a of f of x dx. This is this is again pretty pretty tr trivial, right? Because if you apply the formula, if you apply the formula here, the formula that uh, we just wrote here, I'm just gonna get f of b minus f of a is equal to minus, uh, by the formula here, f of a minus f of b. So I didn't really do anything smart, okay? It's, it's just, these are just some tips and tricks that can be maybe useful at some point for you guys. Now, um, it is customary, I guess, to have this a smaller than b, but again, if it's the other way around, it doesn't mean the integral does not exist. It just makes more sense to have, uh, to define the area being from A to B rather than from B to A. Okay, it just, it just makes sense. We, I would rather just define, I would rather be interested in computing the function from zero to 10 of F of X than from 10 to zero. Okay, it's just a, a thing of an order thing. Anyway. 
I think I'm done with the theory here as well. There's not much we're going to use in this class. So uh, let's take one of the examples we solved previously and uh, put a number to it and see if we, if we can do stuff with it. So remember, you we showed that integral of x squared plus 3x plus 2 dx, again, indefinite integral, no, no sign to it, is equal to, and I'm going to copy it, 1 third x to third plus 3 over 2x squared plus 2x plus a constant. Well, this is what we computed. It was our first example. Now, let's say I'm interested in computing. Uh, let's give some small numbers. I'm lazy. Uh, 0 to 1 x squared plus 3x plus 2 dx. What are you going to do? How do we solve this? Well, this is my f of x, right? By definition. This is my f of x. We showed this is the definition of the indefinite integral. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to take this f of x and apply the definition to it. The definition. This is it. So I'm just going to apply it. So I'm just going to say this is equal to f of 1 minus f of 0. Careful. One big distinction is indefinite has a constant here. Definite has no constant here. Okay? Okay. So let's see what we get. What is my f of 1? It's just 1 third times 1 to the 3 plus 3 over 2 times 1 squared plus 2 times 1. Again, the idea is when you're replacing here, you can copy the constant. And let's copy it to show, to show you. To show you what I mean. It would be minus, what is f of 0? f of 0 is 1 third times 0 to the uh, power of 3 plus 3 to the power of 2 plus 0 to the power of 2 plus 2 times 0 plus constant. Okay? What I said is that you can you can write it, but it doesn't really matter when you're computing the indefinite, the definite, if you write it, is because it just cancels away. Okay? So I would advise just not writing it at all, the constant, when you're do, doing this stuff. Okay? When you're just plugging it into definite, don't even bother. Okay? What is, what is this equal to? I think I, I gave it like a an easy case, so I have one third plus three over two, it's two. Okay? And I'm done. I computed the integral from zero to one of that polynomial thing. Um, cool. Now, just uh, what's the other one? You do the other one. And then um, I think what's going to happen is, oh, okay, you did, uh, you did the other one. Then I'm going to give you another example uh, that I'm going to let you like, five minutes to do from top to bottom alone. And uh, then we're gonna move to the interesting part, I think. Uh, yeah, so what was the, the last one that we did that you guys computed it was this one. I want you guys to compute integral from, can I give you zero? No, I can't give you zero. From one to two of x to the four plus one x plus four dx. Well, just wanted you guys to compute this. Of course, using what we computed previously. Give it one minute for this because it's it's really just plugging in. I hope everyone got it by now. If you know the antiderivative or the primitive of the thing you're integrating over, the problem is literally just plug in and you're done. Okay. So everyone should have observed that the hard part is actually computing that big f of x that the primitive though whatever once you have that it's it's over okay 
It doesn't matter what definite integral you have, it's over. Okay, so again, we're just gonna copy it. We know that the integral from x4 plus one x plus four d of, d of x is equal to x to the fifth over five plus log of x plus four x plus a constant, okay? So now, what did I say that this thing over here, it's just my f of x. So the thing I had to compute this thing that I had to compute is just um, it's supposed to be something if my brain would, would not stop working. Okay, it's just f of 2 minus f of 1 and I just plug in 2 to the power of 5 over 5 plus log of 2 plus 4 times 2. Again, I'm not going to write the constant because it doesn't matter. It just cancels away. So why bother? And this is 1 over 5 plus log of 1 plus 4 times 1. And this is going to give me something which I'm not really interested in computing. Okay? But everyone follow what I did? I think I, I, think I was pretty straightforward. All right. Now... I'll give you, so for those of you that laughed of my, of my like simple and overcomplicating stuff by splitting it, I'll give you an example where I can solve it faster than you guys using those simple and stupid tricks just so to show you how, how powerful they are. I want you to compute from minus 10 to 10. I want you to compute here. I'll, I'll, do, it, I'll do it simple for you guys. I'll do it x to the third plus 5x plus one X um, minus 25 X to the third. I want you to show me, show, show me that this is zero. Okay, maybe I made it a little bit too ugly. Um, no, nah, okay, okay, okay. Oh, I was too brutal. Maybe, maybe you're, it's too early for this for you guys. Let me simplify it a little bit. Um, okay, let's just do this, just do this one, okay, just do this one. It's, it's the first lecture still. Show that this is equal to zero. I just, I think I went overboard a little bit.
Yeah, uh, I think it's better if we just take the uh, break now. For those who don't want to finish, finish. Uh, for those who that don't want to finish or slash finish, just go on the break. I'll catch you back in like 10 minutes. I'll solve this and then we'll I'll show you what is considered, I guess, the hardest part of integrals. Okay. Oh okay, guys, I'm gonna assume that most of them or most of the people are back. So um yeah, let's let's solve this, okay? I'll show you two methods in which you can solve this. The first method is the standard way, which you, we have learned to do right now. And the second one is something that uh, is going to show you why learning how to split okay. constants and everything makes things so much nicer. Okay? So, uh, first of all, one notation that's... Okay, a couple of notations that have people have seen uh, and maybe they're common is in this case, okay? We wrote this, which is perfectly correct. Another way of writing this is integral from one to two of this x4 plus one x plus four dx f of x, so the primitive, this primitive antiderivative evaluated from one to two, okay? Which is basically just the same as f of two minus f of one. But this is just another notation for it. Other notations include stuff like, uh, I think it's like this, uh, f of, x between two and one. So everything works. This is just uh, shorter writing, I guess. So I could write it as, for example, just giving you the full notation beforehand. I can just write integral from one to two of this x4 plus one x plus four dx is just equal to uh, our antiderivative, which was x to the fifth over five plus log of x plus four x evaluated again, you can drop the constant in this case, evaluated one and two. So this is one notation, if you wanna make it simpler or this notation, how, while both of them work, they're just basically the same thing, okay? They basically just mean the same thing. Uh, you can stick to this if you want, you can stick to whatever works for you. I usually use the line one, uh, but there's no wrong mistake. Anyway, let's solve the problem that you guys used. So minus 10, 10 X the third plus five X. I said, show me that it's equal to zero. The way we're doing it is we're splitting stuff really nicely. We should be, I forgot the D of X, pretty important. Plus five integral 10, 10. Again, you don't need to write me all the intermediate steps or anyone on the exam. I wrote the intermediate steps because it makes it easier for you guys to follow. But on the exam, you can write stuff way faster. Okay? Like for example, after some practice, you'll write this integral just out of it. Okay, you don't need to separate, you just write it, the answer of it. Doesn't make a difference. Okay, so this, Again, same logic, this is some x to the fourth, and after some small computation, I get four. And this is the notation I use, evaluate from minus 10 to 10, plus five. This is x squared from two. Again, evaluate from minus 10 to 10. And then you plug in the numbers, dot, 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 you get 10 to the fourth, plus four, minus, minus 10 to the fourth over four, plus five 10 squared over two minus five minus 10 squared to the two. And then you notice everything cancels out. So you get zero. Okay. Everyone followed on this. I think it should be pretty standard. One nice way of solving this one trick way of solving this in which I don't have to compute anything. And that's why I was ready to more or less give you a really complicated function there, but I kind of stopped because I thought I would be cruel. Remember, I said I could split stuff. So I have minus 10, 10, x to the third, 5x, dx. I didn't randomly give this 10 minus 10. So I can just write this as integral from minus 10 to zero of x to the third plus 5x, dx. 
plus integral from zero to 10 of x to the third plus five x dx. Now, you're gonna, love, uh, you're gonna learn substitution in two lectures. So we're not gonna use that, but we're gonna use the graph definition. How does the graph definition look? So if this is my graph, if this is minus 10 and this is 10, then uh, uh, your, my function looks something like this. I don't know, I'm just drawing randomly. I don't really care. And the idea is I said this thing is this area under the graph. This thing is this area under the graph. They're equal but opposite signs. So when I add them, they just go away. I just get zero. Okay? This is another trick. It's going to become uh, more clear once you learn substitution. But so this is some kind of trick which you can keep in the back of your head. This thing is the what you learned today, and this is what you should have been able to do. Okay? I'm just trying to show you some cool stuff along the way. Cool. Now, let's go into the integration by parts, which is, in my opinion, I think is the meat of integrals. <laughs> Basically, it's 99%. Uh, so let's address the topic, solving integrals. I think in this class, 99.9% .9 of the problems are going to be about solving them. Just compute this integral. They're going to give you a weird function. Mm -hmm. Compute this integral. Show that it's zero. Show that it's greater than zero. All the fancy stuff that people can think of, okay? But you're going to need to solve it. So how do you solve them? Well, there's the easy way in which we just split it. Split it. Uh, you know, using using the rules using the basic rules. I don't mean capital, but it is what it is. Until we, until we can solve. Okay. Well, this is basically just doing what we did up to this point. We just split into smaller pieces. And then we thought what, if I take a derivative of, I get that. Okay. This is what we have been doing up to this point. And I hope everyone is kind of clear on how to proceed. You just make it smaller, and then you finally write the answer. So this, I'm going to say where we understood at least. Now, the second, which is the biggest part in my, in my opinion, is integration by parts. Okay, which I'm going to address and show you how to do. I'm going to give you tips and tricks on how the integral should look like for you to apply this. But again, it's not exhaustive. Like obviously everyone can create a problem that looks differently than what I'm gonna do than the patterns I'm gonna give you, okay? And uh, yeah, if I, if I found the patterns, it means somebody else did, which means they're probably not gonna give that, but I don't know. And then the last one is the substitution. Substitution, okay? This we're gonna do probably in next week on Monday. Cool. So these are the three big methods that you're going to use. You either just break it apart into simpler versions until you can solve it. You either do integration by parts or you do substitution. Okay. This integration by parts is nothing fancy. It's just the product rule written differently. What's, your, what's the product rule? If you're asked to take a derivative of this, of uv prime, what would it be? Come on. Everyone knows it by now. It's u prime of v plus v prime of u. Okay? So this is the product rule of derivatives. The idea is that I can integrate this. Okay? So if I integrate it on both parts, let's say I have, uh, you know, u of x, v of x prime integral d of x is equal to integral u prime of x vx plus v prime of x ux dx. Okay, I just integrated them. If they're both equal, then it means when I integrate them, they still have to be equal. Okay? Okay. 
Okay. So here comes here comes the the big trick. What is this integral? Think of the definition. The integral of f of x is the primitive, the thing that if you take a derivative of, you get that f of x. So what is this? What is this thing? This integral of that thing derivative? It's just the thing itself, right? It's isn't it just u of x v of x? If I take derivative, if I take derivative of this, don't I just get this? Okay. As I said, integral, inverse procedure of derivative. If I have an integral of a derivative, it's just the thing before I took the derivative. Okay. Think of it. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of. Oh, anyway, and now I split this, and I get integral u prime of x v of x dx plus integral u of x v prime of x dx. This is the whole biparts rule. Okay, the idea is that if I want to compute this integral. Maybe it's easier to compute this one, and this one is, has no integral, so it makes sense. I'll give you an example. Don't worry. Like before you panic, so just don't worry about it. Okay. So make some simple example. I think of it. Think of it right now. Yeah. Okay. So again, uh, I really want to drill on this. It's not really necessary, but uh, it's just a matter of understanding it. I want to drill on this thing. Integral of u x dx prime, everything prime dx is equal to some big f of x plus a constant. So the idea is that this f prime of x is going to give me ux vx prime. Right, that is the definition of the integral. So now from this thing, I'm just saying, hey, it means that f of x is just equal to ux v of x. Make sense? So what I'm saying is I want to compute this integral over here. This integral is just something, some f of x. I don't know. It has a primitive. It just has a primitive. So what is the definition of the primitive or the antiderivative? It means that if I take derivative of this, I'm going to get what's underneath the integral. So if I take a derivative of f prime of x, I'm going to get what's underneath the, the integral, which is just this thing derivative. So I have f derivative, this thing derivative, they have to be equal. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you didn't really uh, follow that or, or are not convinced, just, I guess, discard it. This is the by parts rule. This is the all important formula. And just remember, it looks very, very similar to the differentiating product rule. But let's take a simple, simple, simple example right now. Let's compute integral x e to the power of x dx. Can we split it? Can we do anything to it? No, none of the previous methods that we have learned work on it okay so we need to use something new which is integration by parts the first step when you're doing integration by parts is to decide who your u prime is who your v prime is you know basically just map it this is the formula that you have to use but you have to decide who u of x who v of x is okay now you have an integral you have integral here and integral here so ideally, you would want this thing, your integral, to be equal to one of these things. Okay, You want to make it so that it looks like that. Now, there are two of them. And this means that there are two choices. Which one is correct uh, is going to come for practice. There's not much I can, give, I can give you. I can give you some tips and tricks, like intuitively, but... 
there's no 100% correct answer every time. So this is where the practice that I mentioned in the start comes into play in choosing which is your U prime, which is your U of X or V of X, okay? So in this case, I'm going to say that this, uh, let's say this is my U of X and this is my V prime of X. Okay. So again, I just said, so there, there are two choices, two choices, two choices. Choice number one is I take X as being U prime of X and I take E of X is equal to V of X. Okay, this is the first one. And the second one, is I take X to be U of X and E to the X to be V prime of X. Okay, does everyone understand why I have these two choices? Why, okay? The reason being is I, I need to use the formula. Like whenever you have a product of some exponential, especially when you have a power times an exponential, it just screams that you have to use the um, this by parts thing. It's just an automatic thing. Now, and I'll show you immediately why it's it's so good. Now I have to compute this integral. Oh, sorry. Okay, I have to compute this integral, and I said that ideally the whole idea of the biparts is to make one of these integrals equal to that, because I'm hoping that the other one is going to be nicer to solve. Okay, this has no integral, so this is fine. Let me and let me show you what I mean. Let's take the simple case, the one I the one I know is going to give the result, and then I'm going to show you why the other case is bad. So you know when to stop because that is a great risk when, when dealing with biparts. And you just keep on going and never stop and never get the result, obviously. Okay, so if this, if V prime of X is equal to E of X, what is, what is V of X equal to? Yeah, exactly. That is correct. But... Uh, the form, you know, the formula is that V of X is just equal to the primitive of E of X, integral of E of X, DX. Okay? Just the primitive of it. Somebody said E of X, which is correct, right? This integral is just equal to E of X. Okay? Now, this... If X is equal to U of X, U prime of X is equal to uh, one. Okay, so now we have all our elements. We have U prime of X, V of X, V prime of X, and U of X. So I can apply the by parts, okay? So let's just apply it. We literally just plug in, plug in one. So I'll rewrite the formula here, U X, V of X, is equal to integral u prime of x vx dx plus integral ux v prime of x dx. Okay, formula. Should everyone should everyone should memorize this. Now, let's let's plug in what I have. U of x is x. V of x is e to the power of x. This integral is just integral u prime is one times v of x is e to the power of x dx plus integral here u of x x times v prime of x e to the power of x dx. Okay, I literally just replaced. And now where are we at? This I need to compute. Compute. Okay. So this is what I needed to compute, right? This is where we started. Remember, this was our problem. This is where we started. That is what, what we want to find out. This thing has no integral. I don't need to do anything to it. Okay. It's done. So 
if I find out this, I have solved the problem. Why? Because from this formula, I have that my integral, integral of x, e x, e x, is just equal to, let's keep the formula here so it makes sense. So this thing, my problem is equal to x e to the x minus integral e to the x dx. I just moved this thing to the other side. And this is another shape in which you you will, you will see the biparts thing. Some of you might might be more used to this one. But it's as you can see, it's still the exact same thing. Okay? Now, at this point, you got to sense it. Is this integral easier to compute? Well, this is just e to the power of x, right? So integral x e to the power of x dx is just x e to the x minus, what is this integral? Why do I need to take, the, take a derivative of to get e of x? Just e of x. And then just slam a constant. Yeah. Um, it's from the it's from the by parts formula. This one. I, I literally just plugged in. Yes. The constant. Whenever you're writing, like whenever you're writing integral, indefinite integral, the indefinite integral has to have a constant at the end. When it's indefinite, it has to have a constant for the answer to be complete. It is the x part plus the constant. Why? Because when you take a derivative of the right side, the constant just disappears. Okay, if you guys want to check, if you don't believe me, derivative of x e to the x minus e x plus a constant derivative of x is equal to, I have to apply chain rule here, so it gets... 1 times e x plus x times e x minus e x. That's all. This goes away. This goes away. And I got the result here. So it means everything is fine. Okay. Everyone follow kind of what I did, the procedures. Now, let's go to the sucky part, which is why, if you chose wrong, you would get stuck. It wouldn't work out. That is that hurts for me as well. So let's do it. Uh, we're in case one, okay? The bad case. I got. We're gonna proceed exactly like we did before. So x is equal to u prime of x. So it means that u of x is equal to the integral of x dx, which by now, we, you should kind of believe me that is x squared over 2. And then e of x is equal to v of x, which means that v prime of x is equal to just e of x. And now, again, I have all my four terms. It means I can just plug in the formula and see what I get. So let's see what we get. <laughs> I'll write the formula again so everyone can see it. Plus it's good practice. If you if you're really if you're really mastering it and whatever, you can write it with the minus straightforward. Uh I just think for the first two cases I'm going to write it like this cuz it's makes it makes more sense. Okay, this is the formula. Now let's see, we just plug this, plug these in. So we get u of x, I said x squared over two times v of x is just e to the x integral u prime is x times v of x is just e to the x dx plus integral u of x is just x squared over two and this thing is just v prime of x is just 
it dx dx. Okay, I literally just plugged in the values. Now, this is what I need to find out. So let's pull it out and see what we get. We get integral x e to dx dx is equal to left side minus integral x squared to e x dx. Okay? Now, what is the problem here? In order for me to compute this, which is what I started with, I have to compute this, which is even uglier than what I started with. So at this point, once you get this result, you should be like, yeah, this is not gonna work out, okay? If you apply, if you apply the biparts to this again, the same way, you're gonna get x to the third, x to the fourth, and so on. The power increases. You, are, you would ideally want to get rid of this thing. You would ideally want to just have integral of e of x because you know what that is. Does that argument make sense? Look, look comparison what we had. This thing was easy to compute. This was easy to compute. This thing is even harder than before to compute. And I'm gonna, now let's, let's give you some, uh, I guess, uh, maybe some tricks when to apply it and how to apply it. But again, they're not limited. So this is where practice comes into play and being fast at computation. Like once you get this, you should be like, yeah, my power increased next to the E of X. This is not the correct way. Let's try the other one. Let's try the, the alternative. Let's try case two. Okay. So let's, uh, let me, so the idea is that whenever you have integral of the type x to the a, e x, the x, whenever you have something like this, it is always, always good to take uh, this thing as being, I think this one was good, uh, yeah, as being v prime of x, and this thing is, is being u of x. Why? Because after you apply the biparts, you're going to have x to the power of a minus one. After you apply it again, x a minus two. Eventually, this x to the a will go away. And you're just going to be, and you're just going to have left an e to the x. Okay? Um, now, same applies for, let's do, let me watch the shine we have. Okay, let's, uh, let's do another one. I'll try to guide you and we'll do all the examples, good and bad cases, to see where we're, well, when we're, where we're getting stuck and why. So let's do integral of log of x times x to the fourth dx. Yeah, looks about right. Okay. What can we do with it? Well, not much to be honest. Uh, I maybe could write some some. I'll, you know, if you get on this exam, you might struggle a little bit, and you might say, "Okay, maybe this is just x to x fourth." But this looks ten times uglier than what we started with. So you're like, "Yeah, that's not gonna work out. I need something else." And then you somehow think of the biparts. Okay, you get to the biparts, and now you. Write your by parts formula again. This is literally all there is to integrals. This small choice here of what's your u prime, what's your vx is all that solves or doesn't solve the integral. Because I believe that right now, if I, you know, maybe not right now, but if I gave you like another half an hour of practice, if I told you every time what is u prime and what is v of x, you could all solve the integral, okay? The problem is that I'm not there on the exam. So you need to get an understanding when to choose what. And that only comes from practice, unfortunately. All right. So now I have to choose, okay? I have to choose what is my u of x, what is my v of x, et cetera, et cetera. 
the choice I'm going to make this time is I am not going to want to compute the integral of log of x because I had, don't even have any idea what it is. So let's look into it. The first case would be, let's think consistent, was uh, log of x is equal to u prime of x, and then x to the fourth is equal to v of x. This is one case corresponding to the case where this is equal to this. And then the second case where the other one is, I have log of x is equal to u of x. And then uh, x to the fourth is equal to v prime of x. Does it make sense how, does everyone understand how I split my cases? How I, I'm this, I'm, this, these are the only two cases which I can make, okay? Now, let's see which, which one I wanna solve, which one I wanna use. You look at it for a second and then you realize, hey, this, if this u prime of x is log of x, then u of x has to be integral of log of x dx. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't even know what that is. So at that point, you should be like, yeah, this looks too complicated. I'm just, I'm not saying, I'm saying just be active in your thinking, but be kind of lazy in your, in your writing in the sense that once you get here and you have integral of log of, of ln of x, I've not ever seen that. I, I don't remember in my whole history an integral that if I take a derivative, I get log of x, ln of x. So it has to be ugly, okay? Let's just see. In the other case, this, I'll actually write, looks ugly. That is my reasoning why I don't want to do that. Okay? For you guys, since you don't have that much practice, this this looks ugly might be a little bit uh, uh, relative. But, um, yeah, there's no reason. Like, you can try solving that, but I don't know how you would solve it. I think it would just be really ugly. Okay? That looks ugly. What about this case? Well, in this case, if I take u prime of x, then this would just be derivative of log of x, so one over x. And in this case, v of x is just gonna be integral of x to the fourth dx. So everything looks so nice. Let's try this one. There is, and I'm, I'm sorry if my, my answers are not like satisfactory, but there's no rule that will tell you in a random integral which of these two cases to take, okay? It's just looking at them, practice, and basically be able, being able to assess which one is gonna give you the correct or wrong answer, okay? Uh, maybe, maybe none of them are gonna give you the correct answer. Who knows? That's a case of substitution, but we're gonna get into that later. So I'm here, right? I'm saying case one looks very ugly. I don't even know how to solve it. Case two though, I have this, I have this, I have this, I have this, and they all look really nice. So why not just get into it? Again, copying, uh, writing the thing. So it doesn't, uh, it works nicely. Again, on the exam, you don't need to write this. You can write it if you want, but you don't need to. I'm just writing it because this is lecture, okay? But on the, on the exam, you can just write it with the minus and hit me whatever with it, as long as it's clear what you're doing. Okay, let's just replace. U of X, log of X. V of X, X to the five over five, plus, I mean, equals. U prime, one over X times V of X, X to the five over five V of X plus integral U of X, log of X. V prime, X to the four V of X. Again, now I notice this is the integral I wanted to compute to start with. So, so this is, you know, I'll just write what I started with. V 
this is okay. This is nothing to do here. Like you, there's no integral, nothing to do here. So the question is, can you solve this term? That is what you should be asking yourself when you're writing the two cases. Can you solve the remaining term? Okay. Can you do that? And in this case, it actually magically looks kind of nice. So first of all, what is this? Log of X, X the fourth, dx is just equal to log of x, x to the fifth, five. So this thing minus, I just moved this thing on the other side. Integral, I'm not going to do anything to it for now. Five, d of x. So again, if, do you guys agree? If I can solve this, I am done. Can I solve this? This is what you should be asking yourselves. Ideally, you know, you know, fast manner as well. So I get this, x to the fifth over five. I'll just move the five out. One over five, integral, x to the fourth, dx. All right, because one x goes away, this is four. And you guys already know this, integral, log of x, x to the fourth, d of x is equal to log of x, x to the fifth, five minus one fifth. This is x to the fifth over five. And again, you slam a constant because it's indefinite. And this is your answer. Now, if you guys want, we could take a derivative of this and see if it's equal. I believe it is going to be equal. But if you don't believe me, you can take a derivative of yourselves. Now, in, in terms of exploring the other case, um, I would need like a, maybe a couple of seconds to see what this is. Um, yeah, if this, takes, if this is taking me like a couple of seconds to compute, then it's definitely something not, uh, something not, uh, something that you should not explore, basically. All okay. right. But does anyone, does everyone kind of understand how I'm separating the cases, how I'm deciding what I'm doing? Okay. It might sound really trivial in this case, but for example, uh, let me see. Do I even have an example like that on me? If not, probably I kept it for uh, tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Another, like if you had, for example, let's say you had three terms. Let's say, let's say you had an integral of um, x, x minus 1, e to dx, something like that, d of x. Okay? Two ways in which, so now imagine, now you have three terms, and now you have to decide which is u prime and which is v. How do you split them? Okay, so see, like, I'm, I'm emphasizing this key simple points because if you don't get these like rock solid, then you're gonna panic when the problem becomes a little bit more complicated. If you have the basics correct, then whatever happens, you know what you have to do. The methods that you can do are, not, are limited. You just gotta try all of them. It sounds stupid, but it is what we have to do. Now, I would advise again, just like L'Hopital, before diving in and to solve this problem, Take one second to look at the problem. Can you do anything to simplify your life before just slamming your head into it? And here, and in this case, you can. Why? I can just open these parentheses. I get integral x squared minus x e to the x dx. Okay. And this is just equal to integral x squared e x minus x e to the x dx. A lot of x's there. x squared e to the x dx minus integral x e to the x dx. All right. Why does this look much better? Well, for example, you already, you already computed this one. Okay, we already did that one. Now for this, We're gonna proceed the same way with the by parts, and we're gonna use the whole the thing, the trick that I kind of 
wrote somewhere, somewhere around here. Yeah, this one over here. I said, if you have, if you have something like this, x to the power of a e to the x, take x as being the underivative, underivative part and e of x as the derivative part. The reason for this is if you apply, if you apply the biparts, this power is going to go down. So I'm going to show you ex exactly how we do this. And probably not in three minutes, though. So um, I'm going to show you how to solve this one, x to the power of 2, with the two cases probably uh, tomorrow. And yeah, tomorrow we're going to do more, ex uh, more exercises. Uh, we're going to maybe move to some more complicated, and we haven't done like a definite, but as you can imagine, the definite is like, as long as you can compute the indefinite, you can compute the definite. So that's not really a struggle. So yeah, that's kind of it for today. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Which one we is you in which one is which? Mm -hmm. It's the uh, this board, you know, act logarithm, freedom, exponential, sinus, coisinus. Uh -huh. Then you can choose just by, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's this, this, so this is this is basically just more or less giving, uh, telling you the same thing which I which I basically said, you know, if you yeah. have log of x, choose this as b or choose yeah. the other one, yeah. yeah, that's exactly it, yeah. Hey. Thank you.